Hey guys, it's Gaijin Hunter, and today is one that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for. We have the Switch Axe and the Charge Blade. Now, just like all the other formats, we're going to watch both of them once. Again, it's going to be accompanied with my su subtitles, not Capcom's. Then we're going to watch it one more time with commentary. Then finally, I'll top it off with my own personal thoughts about what we saw. Let's stop wasting time and let's jump right in. Okay, first up we're going to be going with the Switch Axe. I cannot tell you how many times I retook this because I kept saying Slash Axe, which is what we call it in Japanese. Um, it's another reason why you'll see the Sword Mode featured a lot more than the Axe one. The Guild Style is how we've always known and love it. Now one of the things that is interesting and I'm going to speculate here, is that in the Monster Hunter Cross demo, both myself and some other people had noticed that the Axe Mode felt a little bit more powerful than it used to. I don't know if they've actually increased the motion values, but we'll find out. But it hasn't been nerfed, it hasn't been changed, we still have the wonderful morph attack, so I think it's going to be a blast. I love this weapon. 
Next up is the aerial style. Now like the horn, I found this much easier than the other ones because the length on your weapon is so long that you don't miss. You can do both axe attacks, sword attacks, and even morph attacks and elemental discharges. So you can do a lot from the air. And finally the Bushido style. So we have the perfect evade. If you notice with the axe, it goes into a run in followed by the finisher from the axe chops which you can morph out of. And if you're in sword mode, it does a nice one and then a two hit combo on top of that. The striker style was also really fun when I tried it in the demo. However, this hunter art is really long. You can go ahead and count it. That is eight seconds long, guys. So if you're going to be doing this one, you want to do it right after a monster is downed or maybe before they're down or right before they hit a trap because you're not going to get off every hit if you don't. It pretty much pulls out the entire, like every trick in the book. It does the axe attacks, the sword attacks, the finisher. Um, so it's all good. Now this next one is really, really cool. Check this out. So you charge up your sword mode into what they call like a demon mode and it does like even more power. Now one of the things that the control guide for Tokyo Game Show mentioned was that the more power you have in your uh, gauge, the longer you're going to be able to enjoy that effect. Next up is the charge blade or we call the charge axe in Japan. That's another reason why they focus more on the axe mode for this weapon versus the switch axe which they focus on the sword. Now first up is guild style. I'm happy to report they haven't nerfed anything which is actually surprising because I think it's overpowered in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and everybody knows it. It's way too versatile. It's got quick attacks, long attacks, strong attacks, guarding, evasion, guard points, super attacks, stun, elemental, it's got it all. So the fact that you can still enjoy the weapon as it's been meant is awesome. They did change the ultra here. If you notice, it's just one blast now. So no more enjoying the shock wave if you sucked at aiming. But that won't be a problem for most of us. The aerial style seems fun enough. I mean, you can do lots of axe attacks, sword attacks, morph attacks, even the super discharge as well. So I think it's going to be really fun for a lot of people. Finally, the Bushido style. Now, this weapon is unique in that it has both the perfect guard. If you notice here, it goes straight into a charge. So if you want to charge up your files, that's nice. It also has a perfect evade as well, which goes into the wonderful elemental discharge too, which is that circular hit. So some people might be a little disappointed, but I actually think that that uh, is a really good Bush Bushido style. Now, the energy blade is interesting because the more files you have, it's not just the power, but it also appears that the longer that blade is going to get. Now if you do it with no files it does look pretty lackluster but if you do have it charged up um, it does look like it's going to be a very heavy hitting attack. So this next one over limit is going to be a fun one as well. I don't know how long it's going to last but if you watch instead of five files it adds two and you have a maximum of seven. Now red still only charges five so it's not going to charge seven all of a sudden but you better believe that if you unload an ultra discharge with both the shield and these files charged up, it's going to be insane. So there you go. What did you guys think? I think the switch axe was a lot of fun. I think it's always been a very uh, fun weapon to use. It has a long reach. Um, so I think all the styles are going to be pretty groovy. I do like the Bushido style. I like that the perfect evade with axe uh, goes into that nice sort of like twisting attack that you do after you do the axe chops. If you guys don't know what that move is, go ahead and do an upward chop with X plus A. Then start doing X chops by jamming on the A button and then hit the R button. And you can actually enjoy that move in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. It's super powerful and it actually doesn't take as long as it appears. It's got a wide reach as well. So I think Bushido is going to be fun. I do like that they've made enough care um, that when you do the Bushido style with the blade mode, it does a three hit combo. But if you notice, the second hit is a double hit uh, move which means that it only takes one portion of your gauge. It doesn't take two. So that's going to be fun. As for the hunting arts, I've got to agree the trans slash or the transform slash that they have is a little long. Um, I don't know how well that's going to be able to be used in solo play, but online when the monster is distracted from other people, I think you're going to find plenty of opportunities to pull it off. Um, but it's a little long, so it'll be interesting. I will definitely would drink a mite seed before you do that one. The second one, though, is really enticing because it did mention again in the Tokyo Game Show pamphlet that the more um, energy you have charged up in your energy gauge at the top, um, the longer that effect would last, which tells me that if you do it with a full gauge, you'll have a full gauge of super powered axe energy, and that is unbelievable. What I would love to know is whether or not that's a limited time or whether or not that entire file stays charged up until the end of until you use it all. That would be interesting to know because I would love to be able to hold off 
until you know you can go ham on a monster and then go crazy. And then finally we have Charge Blade. And I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh, come on, it should have got a bigger move or whatever. So now, but this weapon is so stupidly versatile and overpowered to begin with. I think they did a great job of not nerfing it, but also bringing it back to balance. Um, I like the idea personally that the Ultra Burst no longer has that huge shockwave. Because if you hit it, at least you know exactly where you're going to hit, right? Where the shockwave on the Ultra sort of spread and you weren't able to really aim it. This one you can aim, so that's going to be fun. The Bushido style is neat as well because you have both the Perfect Guard and the Perfect Evade. Now the Perfect Guard is actually a lot better than a lot of people are going to think. Being able to guard an attack and then immediately charge your files is going to be fun. Because after you charge your files, you can go straight into you know, a morph attack straight from there, if you guys remember. And of course, the perfect evade if you're in axe mode goes to that wonderful elemental discharge too, one of my favorite attacks for the weapon, period. So that's going to be fun. The hunter arts though, I mean, we got to have some more time on it, but I'm assuming the energy blade is really powerful. Um, it does look a little mm, weak to me, but I think it has to do with how many files you have charged up. And then the other one, which is going to be great for sleep bombing monsters, is the one where you charge up seven files instead of five. Now, one of the cool uses I can see for this is that if you use that and then you charge all seven into your shield, that'll give you that much longer to enjoy the elemental boost mode. So I like that idea and I'm pretty excited for it. Go ahead and discuss your thoughts down in comments below. Make sure to hit like or subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel. And tomorrow is going to be a very exciting day. We have Insect Glaive and Light Bowgun. Until next time. Happy hunting!